Parallels Browser Isolation has two application types. One is a secure browser, the other is a secure web application. They work in fundamentally the same way, but they have a different approach from a security posture perspective. A secure browser is given to a user if the main aim of the organization is to secure the point at which the browser is accessing the company resources. So for example, if I've got a SaaS application and I want to ensure I know the browser that's connecting to that SaaS application and also where that browser is from, I can use a secure browser. But that also opens up the user to navigate to alternative URLs. So if an organization has a lot of SaaS resources, the same published secure browser could, in theory, be used to access all of them. A secure web application, by default, is locked to the URL specifically that an organization publishes. So this would be used if I wanted to ensure that a user only used my Parallels browser isolation instances to connect to specific URLs, specific SaaS applications. I would then publish a different secure web application for each web application that user was allowed to use. So let's take a look at how these two application types compare. As you can see, I can put in a name and a description. I can change the icon if I wish. I can add users and groups into this application, and I can apply what are called policies. Both users and groups are covered inside user management, and policies is covered inside a separate policies video as well. And if we take a look at a web app, it's very similar. So you've got the same options as you have in a secure browser. You've now got an additional section here, though, which is called domains. Because a web app by default is only going to permit the URL that's in that start URL box, we add domains in order to open up that application to do more things. For example, if this application needs to authenticate externally, I need to put the URL of that authentication mechanism inside the allowed domains. Otherwise, when the application attempts to contact that external URL, it will be denied. So let's take a quick look at what the user would see here. So they get a list of applications. You can see I have named them browser and web app just so they're kind of easy to navigate. The secure browser, when that opens, will have a location bar at the top, see that blue bar? That is embedded inside their local browser tab. So as you can see, I can both see the URL, the user can edit that URL as well and navigate somewhere else if they are permitted to do so. We will see in a separate video inside policies that you can restrict where that URL bar allows them to go. If I then have a look at the web app, you can see the key difference is I don't get that location bar. So from a user's interface point of view, and we can see no location bar in the secure web app because the user is now restricted to using only this application. So let's take a closer look about how these applications behave. If I now go back to the secure browser and try and navigate to a link that takes me to a URL which is outside of the URL that was originally published, the secure browser by default allows me to do so. So I've now navigated to a different URL. I've just clicked on a knowledge base article here. And you can see that's permitted me to do so because my administrator would need to specifically deny that if they wanted to stop it. In a secure web app, by default, is to stop everything. So it blocks that access to any other URL than the one the user has permission to. And we cover how to unblock those URLs that you wish to be unblocked from a web app inside a separate video, which is the Insights video as part of this series. And that concludes this video on Parallels Browser Isolation Applications. Be sure to catch the rest of the TechBytes videos in this series to find out more.